I've built a fully functional software as a service or SaaS for short in less than 25 hours of work. In this video, you will see my progress and how you can achieve the same. For the past months, I've only been working on my three big projects. This is great and all, but sometimes I just need something new, something small and a fresh start. That's why I set myself the challenge to build a SaaS or web application within a week. Additionally, it can only be a side project because I have other work to do. So I can only contribute an average of four hours per day to this project. Can I really build a full web application, including user accounts, payments, and of course the whole application logic, front and back end design in a single week? Let's find out. To give me a head start, I bought a SaaS boilerplate called Shipfast, created by indie hacker Mark Liu. He is a solo developer and currently makes $130,000 per month just from this product. Insane. So what does it do? It gives you a template or boilerplate for a lot of the repetitive tasks that often take a lot of time so that you can launch and test your product faster. There are dozens of boilerplates like this one out there, but I choose this one specifically for three reasons. Primarily, it uses the exact same tech stack that I use. Next.js, Tailwind, Superbase and Plausible. Especially when you try to build a product quickly, the best tech stack is the one you already know. Secondly, Shipfast has seen a big success, meaning there is an active community on Discord you can contact if you have any issues and Mark will obviously not abandon his cash cow anytime soon. And third, I'm a big fan of what Mark does, from his YouTube channel to his products and nomad lifestyle like me. So I'm happy to support. Spending $200 on a GitHub repository is absolutely not necessary to build a software as a service. Neither will buying it make your SaaS successful. I'm sure even Mark would agree with that. It does, however, speed up the process significantly so you can test more ideas in less time and can put the rest of the time into marketing, which is the more important factor to your success anyway. If you decide to use Shipfast 2, please use the link in the video description as I get a generous affiliate share. If you don't want to use Shipfast, that's obviously fine too. I will root for your success either way. Now, what are we building? I'm making a rookie mistake by building yet another to-do or habit tracker. There are a gazillion of these tools out there and they are probably the only sure way to not make any money. But whatever, I had an idea, I wanted it for myself and maybe there are others who want it too. If not, I'm just losing a single week and still have a product that I will use. I'm struggling with consistency across my many different projects and interests, from my startups to running and working out in general to creating content for my YouTube channels. I did however notice that there is a mechanism that helped me quite a bit. A mechanism that is almost stupidly simple. I really like to fill out activity graphs or contribution graphs like the one you have on GitHub. I think we all kinda do. I mean Mark even wears it on his freaking shirt. I'm using Dreaming Spanish for, yeah, learning Spanish and as you can see, since I'm using it for the past half year, I have been really consistent, reaching my two hour time goal almost every single day. They have these activity graphs too. I'm not reaching this consistency in anything else I do. The GitHub graph specifically is great, but has two problems. First, it doesn't differentiate between projects. Maybe I should really stay consistent with my existing projects, but the GitHub graph also allows me to just start new stuff all the time without staying consistent at all with my previous apps. And secondly, the GitHub graph only rewards code changes. If we are being real though, more features do very rarely mean more customers or more users. So basically, I want monthly and yearly graphs for my different projects, be able to add and track time, create new projects, set goals to reward myself after putting in the time and also have some flexibility. For example, some projects only need to be worked on twice a week. If I fulfill that, I still want my graph to be beautifully colored and consistent. And that's it. That's what I've set out to build. Day 1 after purchasing ship to the GitHub repository, which I cloned onto my computer. After changing a few environment variables and copy-pasting some code, I used the Shipfast template and we had a first page running. Then I did the most important thing, which is changing the theme into dark mode. After that, I called it a day. 
just kidding. Day one was all about setting the general structure for the project, including user authentication, payments, email confirmations, and things like that. Here, Shipfast really shined. The documents were easy to follow and often consisted of just getting keys from the providers like Superbase and posting them into the EMV file. What usually takes me a couple of days was done within just a couple of hours. That alone justified the $200 purchase to me. I got stuck once during the Google login process and was already getting mad at Mark, but then realized I just lacked basic reading comprehension. I used the wrong key for about 30 minutes. After that, all was golden. I even decided to already buy a domain. I had a few ideas, but the one I liked the most was streaks.com, because you try to build streaks across your graphs, and I immediately had an idea for a logo. Creating a logo really isn't necessary at all for a launch, but this one popped into my mind immediately and took a whopping six minutes to create, including doing a favicon too, so that's all right. Time to deploy the project and here we are with an app live on the internet already. On to day two. Good morning and welcome to day two already. I didn't get to work on the project last night as I had a lot of other work going on. So I only worked in the morning for about two and a half hours. However, I did get a lot of things done in these two and a half hours. First of all, the whole user authentication is done, including magic links with sending an email and also the Google login. I also finished payments with Stripe and even changed some of the logic there. If you use Shipfast out of the box, it's set up in a way that if you create a user account, the user gets redirected to a dashboard and there he can click a button to um, do his payment. This makes sense if you have a free plan, for example, where the dashboard should be accessible with just a user account. But for me, that's not really the case. So I wrote some code that after the user creates his account, he gets redirected to the Stripe checkout instantly. And if he succeeded his payment, then he gets access to the dashboard. I also already deployed the application, so it's already live on the internet, even bought a domain and created a logo. Completely unnecessary at this point, but whatever, I had an idea, so <laughs> and it was only five minutes, let's go. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. But for like two and a half hours, that's kind of crazy to me. Like. A lot of the things that are really a pain in the ass usually, like the authentication, payments, and getting this whole workflow right, is already done, even including like sending emails and stuff. So I'm very impressed by that and excited to get started this morning with writing some more backend logic, like my routes for creating the projects, creating time entries and stuff like that. And then in the evening, I hopefully get to start some of the front end stuff. My first session of the day is done and again I'm very happy with my progress. ChatGPT definitely did a lot of heavy lifting here and at this point I have all the routes set up that I really need for the time entries and for the projects, meaning I can create them, I can edit them, I can delete them, I can get them of course. Um, and I've also set up all the policies that I need in my database to make sure that only authenticated users can do so. Um, yeah, and I have a very ugly first front end, which of course I will completely delete. It was just for testing purposes. And then later tonight, I will start with the first part of the project, which is the functionality to add a new project. And um, yeah, excited about that. I enjoy front end more than back end. So I'm happy whenever I can do something regarding the user interface instead of like database stuff. For this product and many others I built before, I decided to not do any previous design using tools like Figma, but went right into the code and used Tailwind plus some of the Daisy UI components to get my interface going. This is not really recommendable, but whatever. It was a step-by-step -step approach purely based on vibes, I guess, and evolved over time during the week. I can say that I'm quite happy with the final result, which you will of course see later in the video. I think I'm done for today, so let me show you what I've got so far. As you can see, here is the create your first project form, which will be the screen that people see right after 
they have finished their payments. So you will have a short loading screen where it's checked if the user already has a project or not. And if they don't have a project, they will see this. Um, it's not finished yet, like this page is not, not completely done. Um, but this will be the focus point here in the middle. I will probably have some kind of nav bar with the logo again, and then also some kind of footer. Um, but yeah, how does this work? I can input the project, like, I don't know, test project, which has a minimum time of 50 minutes, goal time, I don't know, let's say 90 minutes. I can also change the color of the project. So it could be like, I don't know, red, violet, whatever. We just take emerald for now. And then I have uh, this thing right here where you can pick the frequency. It's either daily or multiple times per week, um, either without any specific days picked, or you can also go, go here and pick the, the days that you want to do the task. And in that case, the frequency automatically adjusts and then I can create the project and the project is created successfully. I get to the project overview, which of course I haven't done yet, but now the user has a project, it's saved in the database. So if I would refresh this, I um, get the short loading screen and then I get to the project overview instead of the create your first project page. So if we go into the database, we can already see it's right here with the project, the time, um, time goals, and then this JSON, which tells me how many times the task should be done per week and also the specific days if there are any. Of course, it also looks good on all different screen sizes. So I could have, for example, right here, a tablet in portrait mode or of course a mobile screen and it automatically, everything gets adjusted. Um, I even have um, these kind of error messages here, which are called toasts. <laughs> so if I, for example, have a goal time that is lower than the minimum time, I will have an error I would also have one if it doesn't have any name. Um, and yeah, so the user can't do anything wrong here after these messages. I made a little time schedule for the rest of the week. So here's what it looks like. Today, I wanna to start working on adding entries to the project. So I will have a time tracker component so far, I'm thinking about doing something like an activity ring where you can see how much of your time you've already done for the day. Um, I also want to be able to add time manually and also remove time manually from projects and put notes on what you've worked on. Thursday and Friday will be more focused on displaying these kind of entries. I will have the yearly and monthly view of these activity graphs. Saturday, I focus on the landing page and then Sunday, um, I have some miscellaneous stuff like adding the privacy policy and imprint and probably some cleanup. And then I have some optional features like if I want to work on them on a Sunday, I will do so. If not, that's fine as well. And also I have some buffer in case the yearly and monthly view take longer than I thought. Doing the time tracker was pretty straightforward. And after handling some edge cases, I was able to now record time and save it to a respective project in the database. However, I still needed a way to save entries manually. If I have doing workouts as one of my projects where I want to be consistent, I'm not gonna use the timer, but just enter the time manually after I'm back from the gym. Okay, I'm now ready with the time tracker part. So here's what I got. I got this very minimalistic component right here where I can pick between my different projects. I have two right now. The circle of the tracker is going really fast here because for testing purposes, I only have set my goal time to I think like a minute or so. And the rings color is the color of the project as well. I can of course um, save my entry. I can enter a node, like first node, whatever. Save it or close it. And as the entry is saved in the database, it also gets refreshed here. So if I go back to my test project, you see I have already completed 23 seconds of my daily goal. Day four and five, meaning Thursday and Friday, were spent building the graphs for the year and month. Here you can see how I created the user interface step by step. I also added the ability to start the graphs from the day of the signup, because maybe that's the day you start getting consistent. And you can also shrink the graphs. If you set up to do something only on Monday and Friday, for example, then only Mondays and Fridays will show in the graph. This was all fine and well until my realization on the next day. The weekend is already here, so I have two more days. I think I'm at a good point currently. I think most of the functionality is already implemented and also designed, looks quite well in my opinion. Um, I have the yearly and monthly graph. I have tooltips for the nodes and entries. 
Um, I have a few tags here, but I conveniently forgot I still need to face one of the more challenging tasks and that is how to handle um, the projects where I selected to not do them daily, but do them two times per week and more complicated when it's a few times per week, like four times per week, but not on specific days. So I want to change the visualization for these graphs and that's what I'm gonna do now. This took me forever. And as I'm saying this, it's still not perfectly functional. I thought it is, but it's not. Everyone who has worked with date objects knows how annoying they are. Here's what I wanted. If a user specified he wants to do the work on four days per week, for example, but didn't specify the weekdays, there are three cases we need to look at. For the current week, I need to know how many days the user has fulfilled the project and how many days there are left in the week. Depending on that, the coming days are either optional days or mandatory days. For the past weeks, we need to figure out how many days the user missed that were not optional and in all future weeks, all days are still optional. The logic really isn't overly complicated, but it just didn't want to work. Then I also have another feature I want to implement regarding goals. Yes, I know I set my scope initially and now um, I expand my scope, which is something you shouldn't really do, but I think this feature is quite nice and I want to have it in this app before the launch and then I'm gonna go ahead with the landing page and all the other stuff, which will probably happen tomorrow. It's Sunday, so it's the final day of the project and not only that, it's also already past 3 p.m. And I still got a lot of things to do, including building the goals component, the whole landing page, um, adding a footer, adding analytics and some other smaller things. So I better get going. I even put my glasses today to go into second gear. Let's do this. The last day was quite full with two sessions of two and a half hours each. First up was the functionality to set goals, to add some further rewards for myself. I noticed that I like this level system on Dreaming Spanish and having an input goal of hours to reach the next stage. This also makes sense for things like my YouTube channel, where I can reward myself with a new camera if I put in the work. I kept the landing page really simple and used a lot of the components that ShipFast has to offer. A big representation of the dashboard where you can see the graphs and goals of the different projects as well as call to action was the most important here. I also highlighted the problem that not staying consistent creates and how streaks can help you solve it. I recorded some videos of the features in action and explained them with short text. At the end there is a simple pricing table and a footer with all links. The privacy policy and terms were easy to create given the GPT template that ShipFast offers. Adding analytics with Plausible, which I use for all my sites, literally took one minute. It's almost 9 p.m., but I'm actually done with everything. This is what the final landing page looks like. It's quite simple. And yeah, that's it. It kind of took me longer to create this video than building the whole application. That's where there's some delay between the creation of the app and then the release of the video. But that's mostly because I was moving back from Spain to now being back in Germany. But anyway, I'm happy how the project turned out and I'm hopeful that some of you will of course check it out. Overall, I can also say I'm very satisfied with the ShipFast experience. It has saved me a lot of time, even if I didn't use many of the functionalities and predefined components. I will definitely use it for my future projects. I will build more apps and products like this one on this channel. I'm even thinking about doing a series where I build MVPs for clients as a freelancer and making videos about this progress. I simply really like building things from scratch quickly. I will of course also give updates on the launch numbers and share my strategies on how to get customers. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next one.